So you think Wi-Fi stands for wireless fidelity? Bless your heart and grab a seat because I'm about to shatter everything you think you know about that little signal icon. The year 1985. While everyone else is obsessing over Madonna and shoulder pads, the FCC decided to play Santa Claus and gift some radio spectrum bands to the public. <laughs> here you go, kids, go wild. They said, probably not expecting the chaos that would follow. For years, tech companies were like kids with new toys, each building their own wireless networks that, shockingly, didn't play nice with each other. It was basically the tech equivalent of that one friend who insists on pizza when everyone else wants burgers. Enter 1997, when the IEEE, that's the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers for all you acronym geeks out there, finally said, enough of this nonsense, and created the first Wi-Fi standard. They gave it the super catchy name of 802.11, because apparently all the good names were taken. No! But here's where it gets deliciously ridiculous. In 1999, a bunch of companies formed the WECA, later called the Wi-Fi Alliance, hired a marketing firm and said, make this sound cool. These marketing geniuses, probably after an expensive lunch and several whiteboard sessions, came up with Wi-Fi. Not because it meant anything, they just thought it sounded neat and kind of like hi-fi, which actually does mean something, by the way. That's right, folks. That essential technology you can't live without, the one you restart your router for at 3 a.m., the one you name with terrible puns like breaking bandwidth or it burns when IP, it's literally just a made-up marketing term from the 90s that stuck. So the next time someone tries to impress you with their tech knowledge by explaining to you what Wi-Fi stands for, you can smugly inform them that it stands for absolutely nothing.